Company, Steam Camp 2020. Today we're going to learn how to design and fabricate uh, using a, a 3D modeling program, a CAD program, they call it Computed Aided Design. Uh, you may have had experience with Tinkercad or SolidWorks, uh, but uh, here at Mercersburg we use Fusion 360, which is a version of that, but we, we really prefer the features and functionality of Autodesk. It has a cloud storage and also has a really uh, great way to collaborate with your classmates on design. So if you're working together remotely. Uh, so here, here's an example of a need that I had uh, oh, so many years ago uh, when I was learning um, Fusion 360. And that is the tape dispenser. Uh, the tape dispenser uh, comes with a, a spindle that uh, you insert the spool of uh, tape. And without that, that spindle, uh, your tape dispenser is pretty useless. You can't just pull that tape off uh, and, and use it as designed. Uh, when that spindle went missing, I said, oh my gosh, I can't, this tape dispenser is useless. So what I did was I designed a replacement spindle using Fusion 360. Uh, it's simply three cylinders all, all stacked together and in about a matter of 20 minutes I had a replacement part and I was sold. I was sold on the concept of 3D design and fabrication. It seems fancy. But uh, I had a need and I accomplished that need with uh, a CAD software. So that's what I'm going to do today is uh, introduce you to Fusion 360 uh, education license and it's free which is nice and it comes with all the features and functionality there you don't have to spend any extra money to upgrade uh, it is good for about three years so without further ado uh, I'm going to walk you through a simple design to get you introduced to some of the features in Autodesk Fusion 360 but not all of them there are many so uh, practice makes perfect so the more time in the more you get out of uh, working with Fusion 360. And I guarantee uh, in your coursework uh, next year uh, and then the year after in high school and college, uh, you're going to be thankful that you learned uh, computer-aided design. Uh, and I believe, especially with uh, Fusion 360, so quite a few uh, universities have adopted uh, uh, this format. All right, so here's the simple design. Now I'm going to move to uh, the computer and uh, speak to you from this vantage point. All right, Here, uh, here's the simple design task. You are going to join two pieces of wooden dowel with a designed part that you would design in Autodesk Fusion 360. And then I'll, I'll show you later how to prepare that design for 3D printing. Uh, First, let's get acquainted with the desktop, Autodesk. Right now, you're looking at an axonometric view. It's a three-dimensional view. Now, I'm going to take my cursor, wander over to the upper right-hand corner, uh, and cl click on that house, and that gives us that, a 3D uh, surface in which to work on. But I'm going to select top, okay? Uh, so we're going to look down on my design. I'm going to sketch it out, uh, or, or select, actually, I'm going to select cylinder, and then I'll move it back to the three-dimensional so that and we'll play with it to, to actually get taller. Um, but first, uh, let me show you this neat feature. It's called pan. So click on the hand, and that allows you to move that origin. Because I'm going to, for the most part, work in the upper right-hand corner of this quadrant. Okay, and if I click once again, it... Uh, returns to the normal cursor, so we're not panning anymore. But uh, let's go ahead and drop, uh, explore the drop-down menu, create, and select cylinder. Okay. Now, once you've selected cylinder, uh, click once to wake up the, you know, to, to wake up the, the work surface, and then click again and start moving your cursor outward. And the the dimension is starting to show up there, and it knows that it, it gets bigger with uh, as you move the cursor uh, away from the origin of that cylinder. Uh, now, the thickness of the plastic part 
represents, you notice know, the thickness, uh, the difference between the inside and the outside diameter. But uh, I'm going to first choose the outside diameter, and this is purely on preference. It's based on the thickness of the cylinder. Uh, you don't want to make it too thick because then you're using too much material, but you don't want to make it too thin uh, to sacrifice uh, the, the sturdiness of the part. So uh, I kind of eyeballed it, actually, <laughs> and I eyeballed the thickness to be uh, the, the difference between the outside diameter of the wooden dowel and the outside diameter of the coupling. So I'm, I'm going to choose uh, the overall diameter uh, of the coupling uh, was 22. That was based on a preference. So I'm going to uh, simply type 22, and then if I hit, click return, that locks in that outside dimension of the of the coupler. Now, uh, once you click, you're going to see a dialog box over here. I'm going to move this dial dialog box in the middle so you can see what's going on. Well, notice that you can uh, you can change the dimension from this dialog box, um, but notice the height. The default height of this cylinder is five millimeters. Uh, the height of this, I use my fancy calipers, uh, the height of the, the cylinder is approximately, I chose to be about 50, 50 millimeters. Um, it's just showing up 55, but um, let's, let's type in 55, okay? Okay, so that's the height of the cylinder. And let's go over to our axonometric view, and notice we have a cylinder. Voila. Now, uh, uh, my uh, my mouse allows me to reduce the size of a little roller ball on there, and I'm going to make it a little bit smaller. Okay, I'm going to click the pan, which is called pan, and then move the cylinder down here. It's okay, because it, sometimes it gets a little big and it gets out of view at times. Now, I'm going to go uh, click top once again, and the reason I'm going to click top is I'm going to sketch a circle on the top that represents the outside diameter of the wooden dowel. So I'm going to take my calipers and uh, you know set it to zero and and measure the outside diameter. So notice that I'm I'm making sure that I'm not you know just scratching it to get its diameter, and I'm getting approximately 15.83 millimeters. Now, I'm, I'm going to round it up for the sake of, of, uh, of this design task. Make it easy. Now, uh, click on that, uh, click on the, on, on the cylinder, the top of the cylinder, and I want you to construct a circle. So this is sort of the design process in order to hollow out that cylinder. So click sketch, circle, center diameter. Click once. Well, actually, it looks like it's locking in, and I'm going to click, and I'm going to move that out, that's, that circle I just drew, and type in 16. Okay, I'm going to type in 16, hit return, and that locks in that number. Okay. Now, notice that we have a sketch palette. Uh, there, there are defaults that are uh, assigned to this particular circle I just drew, but I'm not going to fiddle with any of them. We're going to make this simple. So I'm going to click Stop Sketch. Go back to the home, and notice that we have a, a circle. It looks like we scratched a circle, but that's going to uh, indicate how we're going to subtract out that middle part. And how we subtract that middle part is through this thing called extrusion. So uh, let, me, let me click off the circle. But if I take my cursor and click once, I'm highlighting that circle. Then if you go over to create, you'll see this feature next to the, that, that cube with round sides. And it's called extrude. And when I hit extrude, it gives me an arrow which allows me, and there's a dialog box that allows you to, to indicate what that does. But if I grab that arrow and move up, or in this case, I'm going to move down through the cylinder. Uh, and the distance I want to uh, go down through the cylinder is, you can do it at the exact height of the cylinder, which is about 55. But uh, just for the sake of safety, you know, go 56. So again, these dialog boxes are all editable. So uh, 56, uh, click OK, and we now have a cylinder. Done. We just designed 
the coupling with the outside diameter of 22 and the inside diameter of 16. All right, at this time, I'm going to show you how to prepare this for 3D printing. Okay. Now, to do that, go over to bodies. Okay, this, this nice, these menu, this menu, set of menus here, uh, keeps track of our sketches and uh, the things that we created. So the cylinder body, called body one, uh, I'm going to right click on body one and I get a menu, quite a few uh, click event procedures, and I'm going to select STL. And what this does is it saves this design in an STL format. Okay, and the STL is a fancy word for stereo lithograph. Okay, now um, it's showing you the mesh preview, which is how the 3D printer creates that structure inside uh, in the in the part. And notice it's not solid plastic. Uh, it's a it's a, it's a bunch of little lines that are moving back and forth as it builds this part from the bottom up. All right. Uh, I'm going to leave the default settings as they are. I'm going to click OK, and then it wants me to call it something. So I'm going to call it coupler. Okay, that's my couplink. I'm going to join my two pieces of wood. Uh, it's, it's going to save it to the desktop. Click Save. Oh, I have one already called that. Well, I'm going to replace it because it's a unique design. Uh, now, to prepare for printing, it's now an STL format. The MakerBot print software, uh, and very similar to other print softwares. At Mercersburg, we have uh, an array of MakerBots. We have the large volume. We have the Replicator Plus. We have the uh, Replicator fifth generation. And we also have an Ultimaker. They're all very similar in how you prepare these, uh, these parts. Now, uh, now that I have the Maker print up, I'm going to take my coupler design and move it onto the work surface in the MakerBot software. So let's, let me see if I can find that, that coupler that's on the desktop. Okay, there it is right there. So I'm gonna take that and just simply park it on the work surface. Now notice that the, notice that the coupler is laying flat. Now the 3D printer builds the part from the bottom up. Okay, as it moves. So I'm going to take that part and stand it on end. And to do that, in the MakerBot print software, uh, there's that, that, that sort of chasing arrow. That lets you change the orientation. So I'm going to click on that, and it's the x-axis that I'm going to change, uh, go through a 90-degree rotation. That's going to stand it up. Now, place face on build plate, because sometimes when you rotate these parts, on the bill plate, it's floating above the bill plate. Um, and I'm not exactly sure why, but um, that's what's happening. All right, next we click on the part, click export. I have Re Replicator Plus, and I'm gonna call that coupler once again. It's okay to call it uh, the same name. Let me just save in a different program, the MakerBot print software. Uh, it's preparing and estimating the export, so I have to wait a little bit uh, for this to fully process that for an actual ready print file. And uh, as we're waiting, once you, once the MakerBot print software develops that file for printing, uh, put it on a thumb drive, or your your printer may be hooked up to your computer. All right, here we go. Successfully exported the file. All right, so that's it. And uh, uh, put your file in the printer, hit print, and about 30 minutes later, you'll have this part. What simple is that? And uh, the, it's, it's remarkably accurate because the, the caliper gave me a, an outside diameter of the, of the wooden dowel of approximately 15.87 millimeters. And I bumped it up to 16, and, and it just fits, just slides in there. Just start, it slides in there. Okay, I can even, if I, I can even go to the other side. So it's pretty darn accurate. I bet if I uh, set it to the 
15.98, it would have been all on the tight side. So that's something that you'll uh, get accustomed in the iterative process. You'll get to know your uh, your calipers, and it's based on user user define or is this user friendly? Yes, it is. But sometimes uh, we make an error in our own measurement. Uh, but it does a pretty nice job. So there you have it. Uh, 3D design and fabrication. Uh, in this case, a simple coupling. So practice makes perfect. All right. Have a good evening.